Hello, hello, and welcome back to Rare Rue Crafts. I'm on with you today to share a project and a, a short tutorial to show you how I've made these lovely stick pins and matchbook holders. Now, this was inspired by some lovely products that were sent to me by the people over at Bead Park. Um, they sent me these gorgeous ceramic beads that are all, um, I think they're like hand painted or transferred with little um, floral images, and there's loads of different colours, every colour you could want in that box. And it just inspired me to make stick pins with them. So I've made a few little um, selections here um, so that I can send some out to friends as happy mail. Um, so I've got various colours all made up and put into their little, um, their little matchbook holders. And as you can see, the centrepiece is the beautiful bead from Bead Park. Um, and I've also used some of the other beads that they have sent me as well. So stick pins are really good for adding to um, cards or um, if you're making anything that's got like floral clusters. So I've got an example of um, this is something that I made. Um, I made it quite some time ago for JMC Designs when I was on the JMC Designs um, design team. I made this for Craft Stamper magazine. Um, and uh, obviously this was the image, um, and that was Hattie from the Alice in Wonderland inspired collection. And I'd got these lovely little teacups and I'd stamped the time for tea. And I just thought, oh, a teapot stick pin, that would be amazing. So that's exactly what I made. I made a little um, teapot stick pin, which is stuck into my little floral cluster here. Um, and I just think that's gorgeous. And, and you can, you know, I add them onto to cards and, and all sorts. Um, so they're really nice to send as little gifts because people can add them to their own projects. So if you want to, uh, to make these, you are going to need, um, first of all, you're going to need some sort of pin. So these are corsage pins, these two here. Um, they were from the range. These I just got online. Um, if you just look up corsage pins on Ali or um, eBay or anywhere like that, you'll find those. Um, these ones I actually got from the pound shop um, and they're just long, extra long sewing pins. Um, so yeah, got those as well. Um, you can get them with like little love hearts and like um, almost like teardrop pearl things on the top, you know, all sorts of them. Um, you're obviously going to need some beads. Like I say, I've got these beautiful ceramic ones that Bead Park sent me. Um, I've also got, um, and I've used in, in this project i've used these beautiful metal they're like barrel beads or, or pumpkin beads they're absolutely beautiful in fact i'm opening the bag there's one there uh, and just try and get the camera to focus on it if it will absolutely beautiful um would help if i could get any light on the subject but i'm really struggling but yeah, it is a beautiful, beautiful bead. And they're nice. They've got a nice bit of weight to them, but they're not super, super heavy. Um, and then they also sent me these like almost sort of um, lantern or UFO type shape beads as well. Um, so I have used those in one of the stick pins. So each of the stick pins that I've made has got some of the beads that Bead Park sent me. They did also send some gorgeous gold. These are beautiful, beautiful um, like lantern shaped ones. Um, and some big silver barrel beads and some red copper so they are all beautiful the only reason I haven't used those is because I've gone for silver for all the metal work in the stick pins today but the selection at Bead Park of beads as you can imagine is just huge so um, you'll be spoiled for choice if you do go over and have a look so you obviously need your beads. You need something to keep your beads onto your pin. So I use um, little earring backs. They're just like little silicon earring backs. I buy big bags of them from AliExpress. I would imagine that you can get those as well from Bead Park. Um, I just buy loads of those and that way you don't have to glue the beads onto the pin. You can glue the beads onto the pin but you've got to get the right type of glue. Um, Things like super glue can be a bit brittle and if they're dropped, it, the, the glue can shatter and then your beads will come rolling off. And the thing I like about using the earring backs is if the recipient wants to move around the order of the beads or wants to add beads in or take beads away, then all they've got to do is slide the stopper off and they can um, alter as they wish. So that's what I use to keep my beads on. Um, what else are you going to need? Um, you are going to need 
um, a piece of card. Now mine is eight and a quarter in length. I've gone for eight and a quarter in length just because that happens to be the size, the length of the pad, the, the patterned paper pads that I'm using. You could go a bit longer if you wanted to. You could go eight and a half and just make your, your top flap um, slightly bigger. Um, but like I say, I'm just using with um, using the, the, the length of the cardstock I've got. What you're going to do with that is once you've cut it to um, eight and a half or eight and a quarter, minor eight and a quarter by three inches. I've then put it on the scoreboard and I've scored it at two and a quarter inch. I've then given it another half inch on top of that and then three inches more, another half an inch and then another three inches. So if we get the scoreboard out, there you go. So hopefully you can see that that is one and a quarter, one and three quarters, four and a quarter and five and a quarter. Now, obviously, if you were making your top flap bigger, you would just shift them all down a little, you know, a bit so that that would come down to say one and a half, two, etc, etc. What you fundamentally want is a section that is three inches there, two sections that are 0.5 of an inch and another section down the bottom that is um, three inches um, long. This top flap can be as long as you want it to be um, to meet. So you can see that mine stop reasonably short. Like I say, you could come down another half inch, three quarters of an inch if you wanted to. Um, then I've got another piece which is four inches by three inches again. And I've scored this one at two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Like that. Okay. So I have pre-scored them. And all I'm going to do before I start folding, I'm going to um, corner around the edges just because I like that look. So I'm just going to give it a quick, quick snip with the corner rounder. And I also like to ink all the edges of mine. So I'm just going to go all the way around the edges of my piece of card. I'm also going to um, fold on the crease marks and ink front and back on those creases. Again, that's just the look I like. You don't have to do this. And then I'm going to go all the way down and round. I'm using a Victorian velvet distress ink. I quite like the Victorian velvet with anything pinky, even though it's a purpley pink, I think it gives a nice, nice finish. And there we go. And then all I'm going to do is fold the top crease down, the bottom crease down, and then create like a C shape. And then I'm going to fold the bottom one up and then up again and again, create a C shape. And what you can do, you can see there, is it's created the little pouch bit that, that the, um, the insert is going to sit in. So again, with my other piece, so I've just cut this out of like a whitewashed wood effect. And I'm going to go around the edge with a little bit of brushed cordroy. And all this is for is just to give it a little bit more definition and I'm going to fold my creases so I just fold them all in on itself to start with and then I work out how I want it how it's going to look from there so basically if you take it and fold the first one up the second one down the third one down and the first one up and the last one up like so what you're wanting is that shape so you want this c so it comes down around in that sort of um, c shape and then out again or d shape if you're doing it the other way on so but it's it's that chunk there that's what we're going to actually put the stick pin through now, before I um, glue this in place, I also want to put the holes in for my um, for my stick pins to, to sit in. So they're always going to go on that first. You're always going to put your holes on that first 0.5. So this is the main body of your piece. And then this is your first um, channel. 
And what you want to do, I've just cut a little piece that's 0 0.5 by 3 so that it lines up um, with the channel itself. And then I have punched a little hole 0 0.5 centimetres in, 0 0.5 centimetres in, and then I've gone sort of roughly in the middle of those two to create my three. So all I did was I drew um, a line right down the middle of the piece and then at a quarter, uh, sorry, uh, is it a quarter? Have I gone a quarter? I, think, I don't know if I've gone a quarter of an inch or half an inch, half an inch, half an inch in, half an inch in, and then I've just gone sort of in the middle of those two holes there for that one. Um, and by doing that little template, it just means that I'll get it spot on every time and I'm not going to be, um, you know, guesstimating it. And then I've just got a little hole punch and I'm just going in and finding those pencil marks that I've just put in from my template and clipping them. Spin it around to do that last one. And there we go. So when that all now stands up, you'll see that I've got the little holes. Now you could do the ones on the bottom as well. Um, and as long as you get your stencil in the right place, your little your little pattern stencil in the right place, um, then your pin will come out the other side. I don't bother, I just push it through. It's better pushing it through because then it's nice and tight. It, it sort of holds it tighter than if you were to punch the hole in. So now obviously you need to secure this into your, um, your little wallet. So it is just a little bit of tape. Bit much there. Like so. I'm just going to flip all the backs off of that. Like so. Lovely. Let's see if I can get the light better. But it's not working. I don't quite know how people do lights at night. Right, so now I'm putting some glue on, but I'm making sure that I'm only putting tape and glue on the main part. So the, the first section before we get to that first score line and the very last section, which is just a, uh, a half an inch section on the bottom there. Now, I'm going to bring my wallet back in. I'm going to make sure I've got it up the right way. So the little flap is the top. And I'm going to take this first big section of my inside panel and I'm going to line it up with the second score line in the middle of where I want it to be. Just below the score line because you want the flap to fold easily still. And then push that all the way down. And then I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to line the bottom edge up with the first score line. So I've got a score line here and a score line here. So I'm lining it up with that first score line. And again, I'm making sure that I just stay this side of the score line. And then I'm going to push that down. And as I do that, it will form that lovely channel. Um, and this is the bit that's going to hold our pins and um, sort of hold the package out as we want it to be. So that's that bit done. So I've cut out some little decorative bits for my um, pouch. So starting off with, I've got this lovely little uh, rosette. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of hot glue on the back of that. I'm going to close my package and I'm going to pop that sort of roughly in the middle. I'm only gluing the top half. I want that bottom half free. On that bottom half, I'm going to put a little Velcro circle. You could use um, a little bit of, um, you know, just a, a little square of Velcro if you've got some stuff that you can cut yourself. Or you could use a reusable, like a re uh, repositionable glue dot as well. Um, you could even use little magnets. So I'm going to pop that on there. And then I'm going to line everything up so it's all lined up. And then I'm going to pop my finger underneath and push down with my thumb. And then when I pull it open, there we go. So I've also cut some little bits of trim. So this is just a little bit of gold um, heart trim that I got from the range ages and ages and ages ago. Um, so I'm just going to, just with a little bit of white glue, I'm just going to glue that on. There's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting it, just where I think it looks pretty. Um, and then I'm going to pop it 
open. Now, I put this um, rickrack on with hot glue just because I find it, um, it goes on better with the hot glue. If I try and use the white glue, I've got to hold it down for so long um, for it to set. So I tend to just go with the hot glue for this one. Um, and that's just a little bit of, it's just a little bit of something on the inside. So I've left that one slightly longer because I wanted to just make sure I get it to right to the end. I knew exactly how many hearts I needed for the front, but not so much for the rickrack. There we go. So that now all folds up. And then I'm decorating mine with these cute little um, butterfly stickers that came from the range. Again, I bought these probably two years ago and I'm trying to use up some of the stickers in my stash. So I thought this was a great place to use some of them up. There we go. So we've got our little um, matchstick holder case for the, for the stick pins. So now we need some stick pins. So the stick pins are so, so easy um, to put together. You can you can do them in any way that you want to do them. There is no sort of, you know, set way that you all, you've got to do these. Um, you do them however you think they look pretty. But all you do is, you know, get a selection of beads out and start playing around with the composition of, of how how they look and, and how you like them to look. So on this one, I've started with a, a little tiny um, metallic bead. I've put a bead cap. I always think bead caps look nice if you've got really big beads. And these um, these ceramic ones are quite big. Um, and then I'm going to put the bead cap and the little bead on the bottom there. And then I've got the little pink crystal. Um, and what I've tried to do, is pull it all together by using the same beads throughout the stick pins. So these little dark pink crystals appear on every single one of the stick pins. So I'm gonna pop that one on like that. So that's that one. Um, and then on this one, I've gone for a, a little crystal, um, a bigger crystal. This is that gorgeous silver barrel bead. Again, it looks like that sort of Chinese lantern type look. Absolutely beautiful. I've gone for one of those. And then I'm sort of, for symmetry, I've gone back to the big pink bead and then to the little bead, and the little dark pink one. And then again, I'm going to pop, a, pop an earring back. Just be careful you don't sort of stab yourself in the finger as you do that. And then for the final ones, I've got these really funky um, spacer beads. These came in a big jumble lot of beads that I got from Hobbycraft last year. I've got cups of beads for 50p and these were in them. Um, I've then gone for the, the really gorgeous sort of um, UFO type beads. Again, these were from Bead Park. Um, and then I'm going for a dark pink bead. Uh, oops, if I can get to it. Come on. A pale pink crystal. A dark pink bead. Fiddly. These bead mats are good because it stops the beads from running away quite as much. Then another one of those gorgeous silver um, like UFO type beads. The final pink crystal. And then again, a little stopper. So making the stick pins is actually really quick. You know, sometimes it can be a little bit longer because you're, you're sort of messing about with the, the placement of your beads, where you want your beads to sit. Um, but once you've sort of got a, a design that you like, you can make up a whole little, a little run of them. So because this is the bead that I want to be the centerpiece, I am going to put that in the middle. So I put, find the middle hole and then I just push and it will pierce the bottom piece. And because it's piercing it, it will hold it in place that little bit better. I'm going to do the same again there. And then with the final one, I'm going to find that hole and pop it through again. Now, because I might be posting these um, and I don't, you know, I don't want any accidents. I don't want the postie to end up getting uh, getting stabbed. What I am going to do is oops, I'm going to pop just a little tiny bit of hot glue just on the bottom 
over the sharp end of the pin. You could just clip the end of the pin off so that it's not as sharp. Um, but the hot glue will come off when the recipient wants to use them. They can just pull the hot glue off the metal because it doesn't really stick to metal very well, hot glue. Um, so you will find that it will actually pull off, um, off the bottom there. And once you've done that, that's it. You've got your gorgeous little set. So this is a beautiful pink set of stick bee, stick pins with all those beautiful beads in a gorgeous little display package. And they don't take very long to make at all. And I think they make such lovely gifts. Um, I know whenever I've sent them out, people have been super thrilled to receive them. Um, and over at Bead Park, there is a huge selection of beads um, that you could you could select for, um, from. Um, but obviously, if you've got beads in your stash, you don't need to buy any more. You could just use the beads you've got in your stash. Um, and it's really great for using up scraps of paper because obviously it doesn't use tons and tons of paper. Um, and you can use scraps of paper um, for the decoration on the front of your um your little matchbooks as well so yeah really good for using up scraps and really good for using up beads um good for using odds on you know odd beads where you perhaps haven't got enough to do a jewelry project with um but you you know obviously we don't want to waste them brilliant you know if you've got a bit of bit of bead soup that wants using up this is um the, the perfect project for for that sort of thing so i hope you've enjoyed having a look at what i have created um, inspired by the, the beautiful ceramic beads sent to me by the lovely Bead Park. Um, as I say, um, these were sent to me. Um, so, you know, obviously this is a, um, a sort of review of the beads. I really do like them. I will leave um, all of the links for Bead Park and for the products that I've used, all of the beads that they sent me. Um, I'll put the gold ones and that on as well because they are beautiful. Um, I'll leave all of those in the description box below this video. There will also be a coupon co code down there. So if you do want to go over to Bead Park and have a look, um, you can always use that coupon code. That's it from me for now. I will be back very soon with another crafty video. Bye for now.